Bonjour, and welcome to episode 13 of my French Revolution vlog. Um, this time we'll be looking at, um, well, this time we'll be capping off the successes and failures of the directory and hopefully looking at those reasons that the directory falls apart in 1799 and is um, succeeded by Napoleon um, and a military dictatorship. Um, in the last couple of episodes, we've been, th episodes, we've been thinking about um, the circumstances in which the directory were operating. And one of the things we said was that in 1795 and into 1796, there's a fair amount of political violence, people um, rising up to try and confront the government. Um, but that, that reached a peak in October 1795 with the Vendemier uprising. And that's kind of true, um, with one or two <laughs> exceptions, I guess. Um, I would say that the Babeuf plot um, is um, a sign of how things were improving in this regard. The Babeuf plot was in May 1796. Um, Gracchus Babeuf, who was trying to lead that as a sort of um, proto-communist, he's he's thinking kind of what would become communist cut ways, but obviously before Karl Marx had even been born. So that was, um, that was his aim, but he gets very, very little support at all. And um, he is arrested and dealt with, and that's that's all very, um, very easily um, overcome. So in Paris itself, and in terms of serious attempts to overthrow the government, um, I say political violence is is dealt with um, and, and is moved forward. And that's a success, a tick in the box for the directory. And things calm down in lots of ways, um, I'd say in 1796, 97, um, uh, before getting a little bit worse in 98, as we'll see in a moment. That said, there is an ongoing problem in the west of the country and um, the Vendée has been um, problematic all along um, really since 1793 um, and the Chouannery um, in Brittany um, continues to be a problem it, it uh, had been a problem um, with the Quiberon Bay uh, invasion in 1795 um, and then uh, again in 1796 um, they're controlling most of Brittany by then. 140,000 troops are sent to suppress the Chouannery, and they do, by and large, um, although it's still an issue in towns and places, even in 1799. So with that exception, they come nowhere near to overthrow the directory, but they are. it's not kind of all peace um, and uh, flowers and, and happy songs around the campfire in France at this time. That said, political violence at a lower degree um, and kind of contained is a success for the directory, not extinguished, which would kind of go in their failure um, box. Now, we also said um, that dealing with the emigres is a success. Um, and I would say that is that is kind of a success. And that's something that after um, the issues in 725 doesn't really come back to be a problem. Royalist support is shown in the 1797 um, elections, which is why you get the coup of Fructidor. Um, but it's not something that, that seizes control uh, of France or even threatens to. And so again, success for the directory. Um, let's deal with the political stuff next. So political leadership, we talked last time about the flaws of the constitution, um, and I won't go over that again, but um, I would say to emphasize that when the directory falls down, it doesn't fall down because of a popular uprising against the constitution. It doesn't fall down because people are fed up with the directors lording it over the councils. And so there's no popular uprising there. And in that case, I mean, in that sense, I would say that's that's a, a flaw in the argument for saying that the constitution brings down or is a failure um, that brings down the directory. Now, it is a flaw. It is, it is uh, unsatisfactory. It doesn't work very well. And that can all go on the failure side. But in terms of success, I would say that you've got four years here, which is the longest period of time that we've had in the French Revolution um, of political stability. Um, and the fact that people don't rise up against it um, is, is a, a modest success, but it, it is a success. That said, of course, nobody rises up to protect it either, which is a sign, um, a, a problem for them, um, a sign of their lack of support and lack of... Um, yeah, people don't like them, basically. Um, lack of enthusiasm for the directory. So uh, two things to go. Um, let's deal with the economy first. So the last time we talked about the economy, we said that this was the biggest issue facing the directory in 1795 and 96, that the maximum price was abolished by the Thermidorians, and that led to inflation, and the currency had failed. Um, in 1796, the directory replaced um, the assignat with the mandate, um, another paper currency. Unfortunately, they tied it to the assignat and it very quickly 
um, fails as well. So that's a failure for them. In 1787, they take the further step to remove the mandate, um, mandate uh, out of circulation as well and to go back to metal coins as a way of trying to you know, find a currency that works. However, there weren't enough metal coins uh, in the country, partly because emigrants had taken their uh, metal coins with them when they left town or perhaps buried them in the garden somewhere, or uh, there just weren't enough around. And that led to deflation. Um, that, again, was a problem for you know, a continuing problem. They didn't solve the problem there, um, and the currency issue continues to be um, um, problematic for them. They deal with that in part, the French government, by um, uh, declaring bankruptcy, um, and they write off two-thirds of their debt. The debt in 1787 was bigger than it had ever been at any point in French history back through uh, to, I think, 1715. So it was it was very problematic and it got worse to the revolution. They write off two thirds of that debt um, using government bonds to pay off some people. Now, this is a success in terms of it resets the problem. So finally, they have grasped the nettle and, and uh, they deal with it. And in 1798, the government actually is solvent for the first time. It's bringing in more cash than it's spending out. So success. On the other hand, grasping the nettle leaves you with stings all over your hands. And what that means in this circumstance is that it, it, nobody who has lent the government money, um, whether they're a small creditor or a large creditor, is happy about having this debt written off. Um, and it does create problems for them um, in terms of their credibility um, financially as a government. Um, so it's kind of a mixed bag there. Now, again, a mixed bag are the taxes brought in by Vincent Ramel, the Minister for Finance, Ramel, is R-A-M-E-L. Um, he brings in four new direct taxes. These are taxes which will um, impact the rich more than the poor. We call them progressive taxes. For instance, there's a tax on doors and windows. The more doors and windows you have, the bigger your house is, the more wealthy you are, the more tax you pay. So these were all good things. But he did also bring back the octroi tax. Um, octroi is O C. T-R-O-I-S. This was the tax um, on moving goods into town. So you had a wall around town um, and you had to pass through a special gate um, and you paid a coin or two for your cart of chickens um, that you were taking to sell at market. So this is a customs tax um, and this was a tax that had been one of the key taxes um, of the ancien regime. For that reason alone, it was super unpopular to bring it back. Now, again, success and failure going on here. Success, Vincent Ramel brings in taxes, some of which remain in place up to the First World War. And, as I said already, in 1798, the government is solvent for the first time in living memory. So these are successful tax reforms. However, they are unpopular with both the wealthy, who are paying more, and the poor, because they don't like the octroi on this um, going back to the ancien regime in some ways. So Vincent Ramel, uh, mixed kind of record for him. Also, we should add here that the financial situation um, declines again in the late 1790s. And this is because um, of the, th the, I can't remember what we're up to, fourth, fifth um, issue that we need to talk about. And that is the war. So the war had been going well in 1795. The Austrians had been defeated in the north um, and the Dutch had been pushed back and the Batavian Republic set up in, in place of the Dutch Republic, pro-French northern border and uh, money had been gained as a result of that victory. But the Austrians hadn't been defeated completely. And so a plan was cooked up to um, uh, to defeat Austria by swinging round Switzerland. Now, uh, a, an experienced commander was given a big army to go around through the Rhine to the north of Switzerland and to punch down into Austria. And an, an inexperienced commander was given a smaller army to go around the south of Switzerland in kind of a dummy move um, to keep the Austrians occupied down there through Italy and then hook up um, towards Austria around the back of Switzerland, um, if he made it. That young, inexperienced commander was Napoleon. Um, and whereas the Northern push um, founders and gets stuck up against the Austrians, Napoleon, through a series of remarkable um, victories in Northern Italy, um, manages to, uh, uh, victories such as Mantua, M-A-N-T-U-A, and Rivoli, R-I-V-O-L-I, -I, managed to defeat the Austrians in northern Italy um, and uh, start to threaten Vienna um, by hooking around Switzerland, as I said. Now, what that means is that, um, uh, well, three things, I suppose. Uh, the first one is 
money, money, money. Um, the victories bring in lots of cash. Uh, Milan is looted um, to within an inch of its life. And this money pays off the army um, and also helps out the government um, hugely. So the government's partly um, solvent in 1798 due to the tax reforms and the bankruptcy, but also due to military victory. Second thing it does, it makes Napoleon super famous. Um, uh, he becomes um, the most famous and popular individual within um, Republican France at this stage. And of course, that's the foundation for him then becoming the leader of France in 1799. And the third thing it does is it sets up the Treaty of Campo Formio. Uh, Campo Formio um, is a place where a treaty was signed. Um, and uh, that was in October 1797. Campo Formio is spelled capital C A M P O hyphen capital F O R M I O Campo Formio. Um, and the director's directory said to uh, Napoleon, do not sign the treaty by yourself. But Napoleon went ahead and signed it by himself, uh, making him even kind of more famous and authoritative and, and again, a bigger threat to the directory. Um, Partly because this wasn't just a peace treaty saying, oh, we'll stop fighting each other, but also it you know, reshaped Europe. You can go and look at some of the, the ways in which it does that, but it trades bits of territory around. So Napoleon was taking on an awful lot of authority upon himself. I think more importantly, he becomes you know, a figure who is in his own right now seen as an authority, a national kind of authority on things. Probably partly for that reason, uh, in May 1798, he's given permission to go and um, launch a campaign against the British in Egypt. It gets him out of the country um, and away from France, uh, which the director are very happy about. That campaign doesn't go super well. There's a couple of victories, but he also ends up having to kind of come back um, and the, the army are, um, are not, uh, they're not super victorious and it, it triggers the war of the second coalition and this war puts pressure on france again the russians get involved um, and the british obviously are involved um, and the french are pushed back inside their own borders in 1799 because then um, so the war then goes in success camp uh, it's won um, and money comes from it so the directory does well there, but it must also go in fairly camp as well, because by the end of their period, they're again under pressure. They're kind of back to square one ish um, where they are um, uh, needing a big army, which is unpopular, needing money, which is unpopular to win a war, which is unpopular. That brings about two important laws in 1798. The first one is Jordan's law. Um, Jordan is J-O-U-R. D-A-N, and he had been a general and also a politician. He brings back a law which reintroduces conscription. Um, all single and childless men aged between 20 and 25 were eligible to be called up to the army. Um, and this is where you get the stories of people chopping off their thumbs and knocking out their teeth to avoid conscription because, you know, they couldn't pull the trigger or something without thumbs and they couldn't rip open the uh, ammunition bags without teeth. This is super unpopular and this shows how the directory is now unpopular because of it. And the law of hostages um, is brought in in July 1799 um, so that uh, an area where there is resistance to um, Republican directory uh, laws can be declared disturbed. And in that area, um, relatives of nobles or emigres can be arrested and imprisoned or fined in order to kind of guarantee good behaviour um, of wealthy people in particular in those areas. The law of hostages again shows how the directory were losing control of the population, as does Jordan's law. It's in this environment that in 1799, uh, Emmanuel Sayes cooks up the coup of Brumaire. He's looking around for someone to lead it. He settles upon a couple of people point towards Napoleon. He brings in Napoleon and Napoleon instigates the coup of Brumaire. So when we're thinking about um, successes and failures, we've said look, successes and failures in several areas, militarily, success and failure, economically, success and failure. But by 1799, although the military probably more successes than failures, it's the military failures that are causing um, an unpopularity for the directory. Economically, they've done well, but the problem is that it's unpopular. And now, um, uh, so that's the successes and failures. And now when we think about what is it that causes the end of the directory, we'd have to put Napoleon in there, number one. Napoleon's um, fame and prestige becomes too big for them to handle. And his popularity compared to the unpopularity of the directory is crucial. The directory are unpopular because 
crazily, you know, they are um, seen as being responsible for the things that are unpopular about the war, you know, the, the, the uh, economic aspect of it and the conscription of it, whereas Napoleon seems to be this genius who wins all the battles. So the economic policies, um, the, uh, the constitution itself could be seen as a factor, um, the unpopularity generally of the directory, but above it all, you'd have to say that Napoleon's uh, popularity um, and his um, his ambition are is the main reason that the directory falls in 1799. So uh, I hope that's useful. That's the last of my French Revolution vlogs. Um, good luck with uh, with your studying. See you later.